John 8, chapter, verse 31. When you get there, please say amen. If you're still looking, we'll wait. If you're tired of looking, just look up to the screens. He's a way maker. Somebody say amen. John, the 8th chapter says, 831, said, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I want to stop right there. And ye shall, if you follow, if you believe, if you continue, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. For a little while today, I want to talk about some indeed freedom. Some indeed freedom. We are on a journey that I at times wonder, are we really accepting? Or are we just accepting church? Do we really embrace after all of the examples in scripture and the long period of time that God has ministered to us in a small setting, but a large purpose. Until you can embrace your purpose, your setting will not change. Let me say that again. I was telling Pastor C this morning that a plant will not grow past the restrictions imposed upon it by the pot. I don't care how big it's supposed to grow. It will not grow if there has been no room for the roots. God will not open up your purpose truly until your foundation can handle roof, root growth. Why? Because your roots are the tool, the vehicle that God uses to maintain balance. And God will not give you all of this, if you're in a small spot. Somebody say individually. So, so before we start here, everybody that wants a greater you, you have to follow God's principle. He said, give me, let me give you back. Because you're giving him denotes trust. And his giving back denotes fulfillment of promise. God will not bless you past your ability to handle it. I know when you read Deuteronomy, it says these blessings will overtake you. But if you ain't got no shoulders, you ain't got no room for the blessing. Y'all ain't getting that for real. Because shoulders is not a physical thing. It's an ability to stand in the midst of a rain, regardless of what type of rain it is. Because there is a latter rain that requires a previous rain that was insufficient for what God has for you. That's why he gives it to you after you can handle it. After you suffered a little bit. So it behooves me why folk continually embrace to me and that's just my spiritual opinion, what God does for them daily in the areas they don't lack. 
For in those areas, when you look through life, the simplistic things are like take the pot. If you, you ever take the, the pot out if you've ever replanted it? <laughs> when, when you know the season's ready? Ain't it funny how you can't see in the pot? But you know it's the right season. See, sometimes you might not be able to see what God is doing, but he will lift you out of your... He will lift you out of your limited area because you are pressing up against the wall on the inside. When there's a desire inside, oh my God. When you have a desire inside of you that he's mindful of, he will repot you every once in a while. And watch this now, because a lot of folks mean think that means go to another church that's bigger. But let me help you something. When he repots you, many times he puts you on the same shelf because even though you're in a bigger pot, your roots are not grown yet. Mm. So he has to still work your growth, and then pretty soon you're so big he puts you on the floor. Because you're too heavy for the area where, oh my God. Oh man, I could just preach the pot right here. He said, I want to give you some indeed freedom. Mm. He says, if you're my disciples and continue in my word, then <laughs> you're my disciples in See, see, there's a working time, and now this is a replanting time. For they've got all they can get up to this point, and God's about to move them somewhere else. I'm about to tell y'all something that's going to blow your mind and bless your very spirit. God is about to move on your individual situation in a fashion that your faith will carry you further if you just believe. But if you don't believe it, you will not receive it. And if you don't receive it, God ain't going to send it. <laughs> this is why, this is why, this is why God is stirring you up. This is why God is doing certain things now that's not making sense to you. This is why some of everybody around you just don't look like they fit no more. That's why it's not making sense. This is why it's not enough. I just feel more of you. And I want to be in your presence all the time. I don't want to look for you. I want to be with you. comes in courses and, and many of us are missing the hors d'oeuvres because we will not take time out to sit under God's teaching can I be real I'm going to be real I don't even know why I'm asking see, see we dealt with evasion on last Wednesday and what you've got to understand is the continued word of God. It's purpose for a setting for the real harvest. Because when you, when you understand that, watch this, we're dealing with truth today, but he had already stared it up before Wednesday came. Because evasion is a byproduct of lies. Mm. Every time you evade a situation, you're lying about it. And, and, and when you don't get an opportunity, not me, but to sit under the anointing of God, when he's moving on behalf of you, you miss everything. And God said, get the understanding while you get it. Because it will eliminate some of the issues that we bump into on this journey called life. 
So evasion, it means I, I don't want to tell him. I don't want to tell her because whatever the reason, she won't react right. He won't react right. I, I lack them too much. You don't lack them enough. I don't want to be around folk a lot that can't handle the truth. Because it puts me in a compromising position. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. God give me something to say and I can't say it because of your feelings. The lesson has taught us about this voice. And ain't it funny it's around the time of resurrection? Because God wants you to know the power that he left here when he came back. But if we don't get into the depth of what he's doing, watch this. When you can't tell your spouse the truth, how can you ever expect a becoming of one? And, 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 and this is the same thing mm -hmm, with every time, kind of relationship. Because I don't teach marriage relationships. I don't teach single relationships. I teach kingdom relationships. Because when you get one of them down and it's the kingdom relationship, you'll find you don't have as many problems with no other relationship. When you take the personal out and put it personally in, <laughs> oh God. This scripture, this scripture is all about believing and abiding. It says it will set you free. No, it will make you free. In other words, when you get truth inside of you, it mandates freedom. Guess what? It's been a lot of times I've had to accept some rough truth. Mm. But when I look back over my life, that truth is what has built me. Mm. Not because it was given to me, but because it sustained me. Ah, sustained me, kept me. Because some truths that I got at this stage kept me from falling out of the way on this end. In other words, the seed was planted that was for a yearly down the road harvest. And if I never received that truth, I would have never received the harvest. And a lot of us are still dealing with some untruths. And that's why we can't reap the harvest. I be wondering, why is it that God will give you the desires of your heart and I don't have to worry about nothing and, and he will bless me beyond measure everywhere my feet go and I touch, everything is blessed. Folk will know that I'm blessed and I can't prove it to myself. I be asking God, what am I doing that's not like you? And it's not because I'm doing it or asking him because I got a woe is me spirit. I want to be a part of this truth. Don't give me something that I can't use and don't not give it to me because I refuse to use it. I'm going to fight for what's mine. It's about believing and abiding. If you believe what God has says, why aren't you demanding it? I'm going to use my brother for a minute. You don't mind. It don't matter. I'm going to use you in the hand. We family now. <laughs> in the kingdom. He's got to do something with this vehicle he got, right? And it's already done, but he got insurance. Stay with me. And I told him to ask his insurance company to take care of it. Now, when you get insurance... They don't expect everything. And the insurance is to cover something, right? right. So where's the lie? Right. It's based on your expectation. And this is a simple thing, but the thing that God is saying is we have to change the way we think. We have to demand something to tell us no. We're so used to saying no for the stuff. When we really look at it and see that it's promised. Because every step you take that has doubt about the outcome, 
But you take the step, it's a step of faith. It's a step of, watch this, expectation. Oh, and there's something about what the children of God just put aside everything else and just believe him. Oh, man, that's when that 6 and 33 start acting up. That's when God said, I will add this to you because you're diligently taking steps that you don't have the answer to, but you're trusting my word, not me giving it to you, but you're trusting my word. Uh, I'm on the first letter here, stay page so. It says about me. Believing in a body. Hear me. Man, because of Adam, is enslaved in sin and the sin condition as well as all of the consequences that follow that. Let me say this again. Everything that sin causes is attached to you. Are you hearing me? Because all have sinned. Mm -hmm. yeah. So watch this. There's no exceptions to this rule. So the first thing you got to do is realize that I'm a creature consumed in sin. And no matter who I think I am, that's the truth. How I deal with that reality will determine what I allow to follow me. The Bible said, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. So when that junk is following me, I ain't talking about popping up. I'm talking about following me. And I begin to look into it following me. And the reason is because of the way I'm thinking. God has given me a way out. The Bible does say he always gives us. Oh, my God, somebody getting this thing. It's a very simple thing, but it's all wrapped around truth. If you're not believing the truth, how can you expect the results of truth to make you free? That's why we work on a job, make a lot of money, and afraid to buy stuff. That's why God will bless us for something we ask for, and we spend our whole life afraid he's going to take it. That ain't truth. That's fear. And it ain't about God. You can say whatever you want to Bishop Blake, but you tell the, this word, it's a lie. See, when you, when you break down, when you put some time, you, you got to, look, this stuff don't come by osmosis. You got to put some, he tell you, meditate on me. Spend some quiet time with the word. Shut down your flesh because your flesh will try to pass through God's word and make a result that's not, oh, you don't believe me? Come here, Eve. The devil sent a lie looking like the truth through her flesh, her desire. It's a spiritual thing. And it twisted it when you pay attention to it. Oh, y'all ain't getting that thing. So you got to watch what's following you. Because sin will sin, watch this, and have you in a constant battle with guilt, shame, pain, sorrow, suffering, destruction, devastation, brokenness, death, and most of all, judgment. It'll make you judge everybody and everything. It'll keep you boggled down in the unnecessities of truth. <laughs> uh, man needs to be freed of sin. He needs to be set loose. He needs to be delivered from the arms of it. Delivered. God will give you an uncanny ability to swat down the nonsense when you understand who he is. This is not like God. I'm hitting it off at the pass. I'm not even going to process it 
because you're giving the enemy a place. Watch this now, because everything that enters into your earlobe, yeah. you notice why, that's why they have a, what is it, a note throws, what is it? What you hear, what you swallow, and how you breathe. If you me, at least, I breathe through my nose. I'll, Reggie, now what you're trying to teach me, I, I don't know. So I'm kind of weak in that area. So if I'm a little wrong, y'all just charge it to them. Because they ain't taught me fully. Ain't that how sin do it? Ain't my fault. Mm. <laughs> it can't be my fault, surely. <laughs> so you got to watch. You got to watch what you see and how you see it. What you hear and how you hear it. What you say. Because it's really a result of who you are. Yeah. Mm. Devil ain't make you do nothing. He made Adam and them do something. <laughs> the rest of it costs us sin. And if you let it hang around, money lets you go to the store and buy, sin make you act crazy. Ain't no way around it. Mm. See, the strong man is universally bound by it. Hear me. Because he already came in the house. So, so when God says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Because his victory came in him not thinking like the world. He was steadfast in his truth. Mm. He said, it will make you free. It will bring it into existence. It will shape it. And it will change the material that you deal with. It will produce or cause an exit and make it an existence. It will take you out of one place and what's in you from that place out. It will reshape your thinking. That's why the scriptures tell us, if you in Christ Jesus, you are a new creature. Look at your neighbor and say, you a new creature. And you got to believe that. You, that see, that's the believing and, 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 and actually the uh, uh, abiding. That every time the enemy comes at you because you're abiding in truth, mm -hmm, you will fight it off the darts. The fiery Somebody getting this. See, see, you, you got to put all of this thing together. You know, sometimes, man, when I eat, I, I got some relatives don't let food touch each other. I know some of y'all out there. You want gravy on your plate, but you don't want it to touch the, the mashed potatoes. You want to take your fork and dip it in the mashed potatoes when you want. Thanksgiving is the best time of the year for me. I where you want it, it don't matter. I want it over everything. Lima beans, sweet potatoes, macaroni and cheese, stuffed in with no onions. When I get to eat it, I just close my eyes. No matter where I land, it's good. Oh, yeah. See, sometimes you got to mix it up. Put on some weight. It's a good thing. <laughs> See this new condition. Mm -hmm. It will have you understanding that you have no lack. There's no emptiness in your life. Darkness does not exist. All of the ugly stuff has been left behind you. And not only that, there is no hopelessness. Man. <laughs> See, truth. Truth will cause you to reach out to Jesus. See, some folk are practicing truth. 
truth when they tell you, but not truth when you tell them. And, and let me tell you something. It can be annoying. But you have to tell folk the truth. See, see, you don't want to build a, a habit of being truthful. You want to build a discipline of being truthful. Because it will keep unworthy communication from your lips. Truth will squeeze your throat. When you want to say something that's not like God, you be talking and all of a sudden, what was I saying? All he wants to do is get your attention for him. Anybody ever been there? You, you don't know that's God? Because watch this now. Some of the good stuff you're saying just ain't truthful. And, 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 and it's your opinion. But you got to watch the setting. When I'm with my boys, I can kick it. But then there's a time when the light comes on. And they have to be able to trust what I'm saying. So I got to make sure my kicking does not discredit my integrity. You want folk to believe you, you got to believe you. You got to be able to stand on what you're saying. On a dime, on a penny. And God is saying, you are more than able to do this. It's a season that's, that can be uncomfortable. But once you've been freed of some stuff, do you know you don't have to be freed of all of it? Yeah. God is not delivering one thing at a time. Let me say that again. You don't have to switch your habit waiting for God to deliver you from the habit. See, see, the habit is the byproduct of the separation caused by sin. Sin snatched up your significance. And you, and people, us, we are too often trying to find or fill the gap. So tiredness will set in with us, about us. So we will switch and do something else that will bring pleasure to our flesh, but make us war the whole time with our spirit because we know that still ain't doing it. You know, sometimes we have conversations about what you want to eat. I don't know. And no matter what I say, that ain't going to change. Because just like God is delivered, I'm delivered. I'm not God, but I'm delivered. I'm not practicing it. I'm making it a discipline. So I don't have to reprocess too much. I have had too many do-overs in my life. Oh, last week I told Elder Bruce, I said, man, I ain't made a right decision all day. But God bless beyond measure. Because God was trying to tell me, tell me to just settle down. You're doing too much. You're trying to do this for that one and this for that one and set this up for next week. And this, he says, settle. You're getting out of my will. He said, slow down. That's why I can tell you this without any reservation. I'm t and that thing wrought through me. God is saying, you've not only got to tell the truth, you've got to live the truth. Man, it's a shame that you hear. Because <laughs> when this word fall, it don't go back void. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? God is demanding your spirit man right now to make a change. Because he's already equipped you to be able to perform it. And there's a result that heaven is just itching to make happen in your life. There's some things you, you stop asking for. 
And it ain't because you wait and I say on the Lord. It's because you are not believing. And therefore, it makes it impossible for you to abide. Somebody say amen. amen. Man, I know somebody hear me. God's talking to us about changing your expectation. Now, God is not saying do nothing. That's not like him. But what he is saying is take the blinders off your desires. You are important to him. Oh, man, I, I'm just trying to hit some of this. <clears throat> he said, uh, in John 14, he said, because uh, he, know, he know you got questions. <laughs> His disciple was with him all this time. He said, well, uh, how are we going to know the way? He said, you know the way. Stop toying with it. Stop, stop playing with it. <laughs> you know, you want God expectations, do God things. <laughs> you know, he said, you, you know the way. I'm the way. And the truth that'll make you free, I am the truth. <laughs> I'm all of that bagged up in a bag of chips or something. I'm everything you long for. Said, all you got to do is follow my word like I did my father. I only say what I saw. Oh, my God. He said, I only say what I saw him do. In other words, I'm giving you real life application. My God, that's your God and my father and your father can do everything he said. That's why I'm telling you this. Because I realize the importance in you believing who I am so you can be reconciled. I'm not a man that I can lie. So what I'm promising you, I'm more than able to perform. So I am the way, the truth, and, and the life. I'm the manner, I'm the fashion. I'm filled with the characteristics and habitual manner, the method, the plan, and the means of obtaining this life. The one that I came that you might have. And he said, while you're at it, understand this. I'm not a God of level setting. I'm a God of abundance. Whatever you ask for, I'm going to give you so much that you can bless other people with it. Because remember now, you're in my image. And if I'm opening up windows, you got to learn how to open up windows. Say yeah. yeah. God is blessing many of us, but we storing it up in our own house. Yeah. Yeah. I, I begin to understand this thing. You can't be God's given. In other words, he's saying stop trying. Whatever you give God, he's going to give you more than you can even imagine. I was listening to a preacher, and I will say that much, one of my favorites. He said, in my 50 years of pastor, I have never had a parishioner come to me and say, I've been tired and now I'm broke. <laughs> I don't think you heard what I said. He said, in 50 years of pastor, I teach this all the time. And I've never, he said, folk come to me and say, I can't afford to tithe. He said, I look at him, I tell him, you can't afford not to tithe. That's right. Amen. Amen. You stealing from Paul to pay Peter now. You working with the disciples at the financial institute. I'm trying to help y'all for real, man. I'm going to say this because it's in my spirit and I'm not going to shut it down. Jesus, I lost my job because God was growing me because I was making it like that and I was acting just as ugly as I could. I always thought I was the man. Put some money with that. <laughs> I was making so much money, she didn't even know how much I was making and the house was blessed. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Money cometh 
but it leadeth. <laughs> God has blessed me, country boy, come up here all like that. I got made some money. Made and spent. Stay away from my house. Don't be asking for nothing. Ain't nothing in that but bills. Do you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> you can think I got something if you want. I'll be there giving you stuff. <laughs> I ain't claiming none of that because everything I need, I get. God gave me unemployment that I didn't even know I had because I was independent. Y'all gonna get this for real. I promise you. See, you don't get unemployment unless you pay into it. I got a letter. I don't even know how they knew my name. I'm telling you the truth. They say, come file for your unemployment. What? <laughs> I ain't got no money. And they said, because you have dependents, we can give you the max. I run down there. <laughs> Filled out four months worth of back stuff. Do you hear what I'm telling you? They gave me the max, $750 a month. Me and Cheryl searched for a bill it would pay you because I made so many bills. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I couldn't even, boy, I tithe off of that money. Trust me, all the way tithe. I need a gross blessing. I grossly blessed and gave an offering. Now, I ain't telling you about you. I'm telling you about me. Not once did the lights go off. Because we still had them bills over there. But God kept us. I don't even think my kids knew how poor I was then. I wouldn't even talk in the house. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. I walk in the house quiet. <laughs> Everybody else eat, I wait till they go to bed. <laughs> you know how some roaches come on after the lights go out? When everybody in the bed sleep, I... <laughs> Food supposed to be warmed up, I'd eat that joke or cold. Because I didn't want that microwave to go... I started paying attention to my life more. God just kept opening stuff up and opening stuff up and opening stuff up. You know you don't deserve. He kept opening stuff up. And he, he just he healed my family. And it was all because of my sacrifice to him. The life, the life he's demanding us to have. It's in Genesis. He said, I mandate you have dominion over everything. First one, he said, he, he then blessed them. So, on top of you having dominion over everything, Every problem, every sickness, every area of darkness in your life, over the devastation you felt, some of the destruction that you've dealt with in your life, God is saying, by living this truth, I've set a standard from the beginning of time. God didn't have to do no redos. That would mean he's an incapable God. 
God snatched life out of eternity that went to the end of the journey and came back and began to put in place those things that you would need. When you read the book of Genesis, you will come to understand something. Everything that was done and that was good and that was so was for you. Somehow you've got to. You've got to find a way to demand it. Please hear what I'm telling you, to demand it. When you operate in the truth, the Bible tells us there's no good thing that he will withhold from you. Watch what I'm saying here. It's tax season. And all year, many of us base our summer on what's been withheld from you. That ain't no blessing. Because what has been withheld that's yours is being used by somebody else. And on an annual basis, they give you a little bit of what they withheld that's yours. And and you get excited. <laughs> you want to give a car, you want to get a car, you wait until you've given them your money. And then when they give it to you, they shape your blessing. God said he's not going to withhold anything from you to bless you later. There's a shift. We talk about it all the time. A shift. And the shift is an individual shift. I don't know how I think like this other than God's anointing on my life. And I am not ashamed to say that. Why? Because he is because I am here. In him, I have my being. Let me stop here for a second. He says, Galatians 5 and 1. I'm closing it, y'all. We, didn't we get an extra hour in here? Or, or is life withholding it from you? They took it back. Something. Galatians 5 and 1. It says, stand there fast, therefore. In the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And watch this. This is key. He said, and be not entangled again in, in, with the yoke of bondage that had bound you before. See, a lot of folks, let, let me put it like this here. You know a lot of times when we were freed as slaves, Many of them folks stayed because they had no expectation, so they were okay with that. I'm not okay with the lie the devil had me leading and living. I got a problem with that because I don't like wasting time. I heard somewhere time was of the essence. Are you hearing me? You've got to pivot now that you might receive what's already yours. What would stop us? What would stop us from receiving, from anticipating and embracing this truthful word that God has given us? Mark 38, 8 and 38. I'm closing, I promise you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do y'all a favor. I'm proclaiming it right now. I ain't going to preach long next week. 
As a matter of fact, I doubt if I even preach 10 minutes. You got it. <laughs> My daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Somebody say amen. Are you there? It said, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words, hear me, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. Are you hearing me? When we deny the truth of God's word, it's because, look up the word, get true meaning, it's because we are ashamed of what God is saying. One thing this lesson has taught us, the 12 voices of Easter, is that Jesus said, you will be offended by me. Because what I'm going to make you do, you're going to be angry about it while in the flesh. Luke 9 and 26, and I'm finished, says, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. I know the picture may not look pretty all the time, especially through flesh, but I am truly <laughs> not just a living witness. I am a living testimony. Of what God does. There's a song by the Williams brothers. He said, God's still doing what he do. He's still raising the dead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's still healing. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. He's still blessing. Why? Because that's what he does. 